Tellers and story sellers live on tape. You're listening to me, Vineet Kanabar, on the IBM Podcast Network. The music business has come a long, long way from being the bastion of Bollywood biggies. Uh, today's music business is made up of young, talented musicians coming in from all parts of India. Not just all parts of India, actually, all parts of the world. And it's as difficult for the listener as it is for producers to find new talent, nurture them, grow them, and make sure that they reach the heights that they do, they do deserve. Today, I'm talking to someone who's been doing this for a long, long time. Um, the founder and head of Represent, uh, of Represent Music, one of India's leading music talent management businesses, Ayushman Sena. Ayushman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vineet. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, like I was telling you before this, I've been following the work you do for a long, long time. And I'm, um, I mean, I, I couldn't, couldn't be prouder of the kind of talents you've accumulated and the kind of work that you're doing and the kind of shirts that you wear, man. You have, you have a smashing collection of designers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. That, that's yeah, a first time. <laughs> what really? Are you serious? Yeah, that's a first. Yeah. My first podcast as well as my first short compliments i'm really excited about today already brilliant brilliant that's that's a positive note if there is one right um ashman i i wanted to have you on this show for a while um simply because the range of talents that you work with the kind of music that they put out was something that didn't happen maybe 10 years ago in india um the kind of work that um, that that's going on and, and Today's musicians aren't just musicians, right? They're, they're opinion leaders, they're culture leaders, they're, they work with brands, they do so much. Um, and I'm excited about, you know, peeling some of those layers and understanding from you how you've been able to build this up, uh, build up represent um, in the past few years and, and bring on your learnings for my listeners, um, especially for young musicians or young music or young talent managers who are looking to break into the business. So very excited for this episode. Uh, but before we do all that, how are you doing? How's... How's 2021 treating you? Um, how's the lockdown been? I hope everything's all right with you. I'm doing well. 2021 started off as a little shaky. I tested positive for COVID right around the second week of uh, January. But that was luckily just in time for my birthday. So I was able to have a very strong antibody birthday. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I think for the first time in my life, I took a proper 10-day pause from all kind of work which is not something I've been able to do in the past eight, 10 years that I've been working. Yeah. So it was absolutely brilliant to like be able to reset altogether. So I'd say it was a blessing in disguise, but it's been great. 2021 is off to a brilliant start. We're luckily starting to see a lot of things open up now. And uh, the music industry is so dynamic that there's so many changes you've already seen this okay. year that we're like super excited about this year already. Fantastic, man. I'm, I'm so glad you've recovered and you're back to full fitness. And I love the positivity with you, with which you said I had an antibody. But this is just, uh, <laughs> that's just the positivity that this world needs right now. Um, let me get, get started in earnest by asking you um, about how you got started, man. I mean, um, it's, it's not the most everyday sort of a business, right? It, it takes its it, it, it takes its own skill sets, it takes its own connections, it takes its own convictions. How, how did you get started? Uh, in all honesty, all the credit goes to one man called DJ Chetas, who is uh, India's best DJ by far. Um, I was in college, I was in my second year of college. At that time, I started a marketing startup, which basically was called Hashtag Media Solutions. And we would provide uh, marketing solutions to FNB outlets in particular. Because at that time, social media was still very young and right. these smaller businesses weren't able to afford a big uh, agency and that, that time they were only bigger agency. So I was trying to sort of fill the gap as a college student to try and provide these guys with uh, social media solutions. And um, I also was heading my college festival at that time. Right. So because of the college festival, I got very close to Chetas. Chetas was performing there. We became close, etc. One fine day, this guy... Uh, ends his relationship with his previous manager and he calls me up and he's like, I need you to start managing me. And I have not done anything on these lines before. And he's just like, do it. You're going right. to enjoy it. Just do it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And I was obviously really scared because he's again a friend. I don't want to mess up his career. Uh, I'm still in college, but uh, I mean, he's an established person. We need to make sure things go right. But again, I was very scared, but he just said, go ahead and do it. I was still very skeptical. Then he put an offer on the table. 
and that offer was something i couldn't say no to so his offer was at that time i will give you two bottles of alcohol whichever you choose at any club in bombay you decide and as a college student that is all you need to say yes to mm-hmm. anything so Absolutely. that was the game changer for me and i was like here karna hi hai now i'm <laughs> i'm sold i'm in and that's how it sort of started uh which is we did very interesting things so we put him on television to make sure that he reaches every single household uh right. we started a radio show with him and uh, to make sure that everyone sitting in the car between 10 to 12 when they're driving to a place or when they're coming back from a place they end up listening to his mixes and basically by doing all of these things anyone in india like a common man in india who would think of uh, party music would automatically think of dj chetas and there was a sort of uh presence we were trying to build for him and all of a sudden he obviously grew max massively on socials he became the highest followed dj in india uh, we did a bunch of interesting campaigns uh, which ranked him uh, very uh, highly on even the top 100 global djs just mm-hmm. so seeing all of these things a lot of other artists started like sort of uh, being like okay we've seen him work this with one person let's try it if he can do it with us as well which yeah. is when i started working with, with these artists called lost stories lost stories at that time uh were booked to perform at tomorrowland for the first time ever uh they had to do it and performing at a festival of that slot, of that scale in europe is a very expensive task not because uh first of all you don't get paid a very hefty fee secondly just going there you want to make sure you shoot a lot of content around it you want to make sure you market it very heavily in india because you're doing such a big deal and you're uh, representing your country such a big scale so you need a lot of investment for that now for an artist to put that in on their own is extremely difficult Right. which is why they reached out to me saying is there something we can do together and then that was the first time i was able to crack a brand deal of sorts and we reached out to jack and jones we got them to come on board they did an entire year long tie up with the artists it amplified uh, everything we were doing a lot and seeing all of this again the third person and a field which i was completely unaware about which was bollywood and uh, pop music uh, alman malik calls me up and he's like i want to start working with you i think you understand the vibe well and then we start working together we do a world tour we do all of these massive shows he becomes the youngest artist to perform at wembley arena in london and like just all of these small things that people just wanted to put their trust i never had faith in myself to be very honest it was all of these other people who came to me saying i think we see something in you which works so uh, right. if if i am a successful artist manager today it's because of these three artists coming to me and putting their faith and trust in me at different times which made me understand that okay fine this is something i'm probably good at this is something right. i can probably grow into a proper business so uh more than anything shout out to dj chetas lost stories and alman for like making this happen for me phenomenal man um tell me something when you were starting out and um i'm sure going from okay i'll get you two bottles of alcohol to now legit business uh you have your own concerns your own team um were you looking at someone who's doing this kind of work who were your sort of inspirations who were your sort of touchstones or what was the benchmark that that you had in mind i'm sure you did because um it it can't just be you know serendipity after serendipity that things happened right? there, there must have been um some kind of thought process that that you had independently as well can you tell us a little bit about that so to be honest uh, unfortunately that entire management culture in india was still a little unknown um bo- India's entire management culture has come out of Bollywood. Bollywood had secretaries where an actor would require to book certain number of dates, and those dates were booked by them. The the actor would decide what the fee is. The marketing agency that got the brand on board for the endorsement would would decide how much the actor is going to get paid, etc. So the manager was just basically a secretary mm-hmm. at that time. That's what got translated right. into music as well, where the manager again became the person who was doing bookings, bookings, bookings. Whenever you would speak to an artist till about. even as good as one or two years back the first thing they would ask is how many shows can you get me not right. what can you do about my career how can you develop my talent more how can you grow it further so unfortunately there weren't a lot of examples available in india at that time uh, but there's one artist manager in the us who I really look out to his name is scooter brown he manages justin bieber ariana grande j balvin so uh, i was study sort of his journey his vision how he worked with his artists we have a lot in common as well uh he used to sell fake ids as a young kid i used to do that he used to work as a club promoter i used to do that so i saw a lot of like i could connect with his journey and because i've literally done the same things unknowingly so uh, i would study his things and right. in india there were two people who i really uh, looked up to one was ms karuna badwal 
uh, who's the business manager for Shahrukh Khan. So she happened to be a friend's mother. Uh, when I wanted to understand how brand deals work, there's no one who's done brand deals better than Shahrukh Khan in this country. He's literally set up the entire branded culture uh, in India right now. So I reached out to her. She taught me exactly how these things need to happen. She told me how uh, when I would go to her, go to a person with a with a sort of concept, she would tell me exactly how you need to think bigger and make it a lot better, where the person in front can derive a lot more value out of this. Right. So like she like just over two or three calls, she was able to guide me a lot with this. The second is a person called Tarsan Mittal, who is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Uh, PM for those who don't know manages. Arijit Singh, Vishal Dadlani, Vishal Chekar, Amit Trivedi, etc. Uh, he has uh, done more for the music community than anyone has in the past 15 odd years. And uh, again, just watching his journey, learning from uh, the things he had done. I didn't know him at that time. I didn't get to interact with him. But right. just watching the way people move is more than enough to understand how things work. Which is why even right now, and people keep telling me that I post too much on socials about what I'm doing and everything. But mm -hmm. I'm doing it subconsciously because I've seen that I learned because I was able to see certain number of things happening. Now, through my journey, right. there are other people, younger managers or anyone else who can pick up on even the smaller cues on how to do it. Uh, I'll be really happy about it. Like when we're able to get a Spotify Times Square billboard, for example, we make sure we put the story out, not because we want to boast about, not just because we want to boast about the fact, we do want to boast about the fact because it's absolutely brilliant. But the deeper reason is we want this entire younger bunch of people who are getting into it because we need to rewrite the rules in music management in India right now. We've been following a very bad pattern. We need to change those rules uh, and be a little more modern towards it. So that's the reason why I'm a little more vocal on that side as well. Absolutely. And I think um, you, you hit it on the head when you said uh, there wasn't enough knowledge, enough information. And it's, it's great that you had access to someone as accomplished as Karuna or, or Tarsem, right? I mean, my in joke about Tarsem is his, his name is TM. I think his name stands for talent management. That, that's what it's <laughs> <clears throat> But of course, and, and that's kind of the reason why I do this show as well, right? Because these stories, these connections, these learnings, they're not there. They're just dissipated into the ether once someone has taken them. And, and, and we need to sort of, you know, coagulate them and, and put them all together. And, um, put it out there for younger people who, who are learning. Um, let me ask you this, uh, Aishman. It's, it's one thing to be a, a music agent. It's, it's one thing to, to manage a talent or, or a couple of talents, right? And then there is the entire journey of being sort of a talent manager plus an entrepreneur. What, what was the spark there? Like, how did you, how did you manage that journey from managing Chetas because he reached out to you or, or Arman who saw your work with, uh, with Chetas or Lost Stories. How did you move from there to, to sort of founding represent, turning entrepreneur? How was that journey like? So while I was doing this, I started hiring a bunch of people. Some of them still work with me. And I figured that if I'm paying people uh, salaries, I'd rather do it through a proper established business because right. I don't want to take up all the liability on my own. So the first thing came out of necessity where, okay, we need to found a company where through which we can make XYZ payments happen. Yeah. Uh, prior to represent, I was in a partnership called On Stage Talents, which was with two other people. Uh, that's where we managed Shirley Sita, Neha Kakkar, uh, DJ Akhil, a lot of amazing artists, Amal Malik, etc. Right. Um, the spark sort of came from the fact that for the first two years, I was taking it as a, uh, it was more of a trial and error sort of thing where I was hitting in the dark and seeing whether I've hit the target or not. But uh, when I started understanding that there is a scientific approach of sorts to this, there is a method that can be followed. Uh, there are certain ways how you can ideate to make an artist's career really uh, amplified beyond what they've imagined for themselves. Uh, that's when I figured that we can make a proper business out of it. Also, mm -hmm. obviously, when you see a certain amount of revenue coming from a particular stream, you think of how you can uh, magnify that. You think of how you can uh, add more different sources to it. You think of all of those things. And that's when the feeling sort of came in that, okay, this is a serious, serious business and it's time we really make this happen right now. Represent was a childhood dream. I always wanted, not a childhood dream, but like whenever I, when I started managing Chetas itself, then the word represent stuck with me because uh, in India, everyone, in the world rather, everyone says that I manage XYZ artist. I manage XYZ artist. I think manage is very, uh, this guy wakes up, I make sure he's had his breakfast, I make sure this has happened, I make sure that has happened. Oh, I don't think that's the, yeah, I don't think that's the right term. 
And I would always yeah. say that I represent Jetas. I, I represent Anwar Malik. I represent Zayden. And when I represent someone, that means I am a shadow of them. I am the person who's standing there for them. And if you want to work with them, you need to talk to me about it. So I just think that word had a lot of power in it. And that's why I would really wanted to set this right. up. Right. I think that that's just a very simple twist of phrase, but, but means so much, man. It, um, it forces other people to look at you in a different light. Um, it forces other people to ensure that, Hey, um, this is the guy that you need to talk to if you want to get the best out of this talent. Um, and he knows, I mean, obviously when you say I represent someone, um, the gravitas that comes with that is very, very different than saying, why well, I manage someone. And I completely buy that. Um, and, I mean, me I've, seen this, I've seen, I've seen, I've even seen music industry lingo changing over the past two years since we set up represent right. and we started using the word represent so much. I remember it all about music in 2018. Everyone was still saying manage, 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 manage. In 2019, everyone started changing their statements. So I represent XYZ artist. I represent XYZ artist. So that entire change uh, was really heartwarming. And I'll, I'd like to take some a small amount of credit for that happening even in the industry right now. Fantastic, man. I mean, um, that's where you know that your impact on the industry is more than just the money you make, right? I think um, that's, that's 100%. Very- and especially in a creative arts community like music or acting or film or any of those lines, uh, I think money is a very small denominator compared to the other impact you really play. With, with Represent in particular, our entire goal uh, is to build pop culture in the country. That's what we really want to do. In the US, uh, your musicians are bigger stars than your actors. That's what we want to build in India because music is more integral to everything else than film. And that's what we aim to do. That's what we hope to do. Absolutely. Um, let me let me ask you this. Um, you mentioned you mentioned about this very briefly when we were talking in the beginning was the the whole management culture, representation culture in India is very different, right? There is no William Morris, there is no CA, there is no uh, whoever else, right? Um, people managers or secretaries tend to have outsized influence on large, uh, large talents lives. But now with, with more professional representation services coming in, um, what were some of the challenges that, that you faced in the beginning? Right. I mean, I mean, it might not have been the most, the smoothest of sailings when you're starting out, uh, trying to make it in an industry that's not, that doesn't welcome being formalized, that doesn't welcome being, you know, put into um, certain ways of working or, or becoming more process oriented. I mean, it, it gives me a shock when I'm trying to say this as well, that, oh, yeah, music and, and talent being process oriented. In, it's like a juxtaposition, right? But what were the challenges um, that you faced in the beginning and, and maybe are still facing the, to this day? Uh, first, just to like sort of identify the gaps between the West versus uh, the position we're in right now. In the US, an artist has an agent. The agent is the one who goes out and gets you all the deals when it comes to your shows, your brands, your endorsements. Uh, the it, the artist has a manager. The manager is the one who runs your show. He's the CEO of your business of sorts. The artist has a publicist who works with all your PR outfits. The artist has a social media manager, a tour manager, a, a music manager, a business manager. The business manager is looking into your finances, your investments, etc. And it can go on, so on and so forth into multiple different streams. In right. India, there's just one person, which is called your manager. And that manager is responsible for all of these functions. So when in the US, uh, your economy of sorts is that uh, around 40 to 45% of what an artist makes goes into all of these various functions. In India, the max limit is somewhere around, if you average it out, it will be around 15 to 20%, right. which an artist shells out for the same amount of services, for the same degree of services. So the first gap, of course, is that there's not enough economy for us to be able to really deliver that kind of value for any artist. And that's what we're struggling with as well. So yeah. convince anyone that you need eight different people on payroll to make your career really uh, go that far is really difficult because obviously the artist isn't at that level that they're making too much. And even if they are making that much, they're like, I've already reached this level without it. Why do I need it at that point? Yeah, so yeah. the first barrier to entry is just the, the entire thought process that the industry already has set. Uh, the second was when I started off, I was obviously straight out of business school. I was thinking of things in those terms. I wanted to be very formal about the way I approach things. Uh, even something as basic as getting a show promoter to send a confirmation email 
was just texting me on WhatsApp saying, I would like to book XYZ artists for a show and I would like to confirm it was a big leap. Right. To get them to even go from there to send a basic email has been really difficult. So there's been no real processes on that side. Right. Uh, coming to the music business side of it, where you're interfacing with labels, you're interfacing with distributors, you're working with various DSP stores, etc. Um, earlier, it was the label that would do everything for you. You have assigned 100% of your rights to the label for a certain amount of fee. You're done with that. You've taken your fee. You're happy. You're not involved anymore. Whereas the way we wanted to do it is we want to be involved at each and every single level. So if I'm working with a label, I want to make sure my artists have their songwriter share at least covered so that they are able to make money off this song for the rest of their life because music is the only asset they really own and they really create. So that's the only asset that their kids can also feed off on or that's what they can give away to their family at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to first make sure that our artists are able to own their own music in some way, some form or the other. Uh, the next was the promotion side. I, again, since India doesn't come from a place where they want to position musicians to the prime, a label will always think of how they can make the song bigger. They'll always think of the song versus the artist. Mm -hmm. Now, the way we want to do it is we want to market the artist to be way bigger than the project itself. We want to make sure that all of these songs are investments towards an artist's bigger future, where they're able to be the superstar at the end of the day. So... Whenever we're stepping in, we're always thinking of, okay, how is this going to benefit the artist? Whereas the label is always on the side of how is this going to benefit the song? So getting them to change their outlook, saying that you need to invest in an artist's career versus an artist's song is another challenge which has been there. We're starting to see that change happen a bit now, but it's still too new for that to be really judged. Okay. Can, uh, can you give us an example? I mean, maybe without naming names or ruffling feathers, can, can you give us an example of something like this? It's so big. So right now, every single music label you look at will cast some or the other influencer in a music video. Right. Why are they casting an influencer in the music video? Or no? so first of all, it's called a non-film song, which means it's an independent song of sorts. Right. But at the end of the day, there's a film star or an influencer in the music video. That film star or uh, influencer has now gone on to call the song their own. And the artist has become a very small part of it. Right. Uh, and the reason the label says they're doing it is because the artist doesn't track enough on digital and the artist can't rake in those kind of views. However, if the label from day one starts investing in that artist and puts them in the forefront of the video, starts building them to that point, only then will they ever be able to bring in those kind of views. You right. need to start somewhere, right? That starting point isn't there. And people are just worried about how one particular song will perform versus how you actually need to build a catalog or a body of work to really monetize or something. You're playing very short-term bets versus your vision when you're partnering with a creative has to be a lot more long-term. Um, I have a big complaint even with like streaming platforms, for example. You call yourself a streaming platform. You're saying that you're artist-friendly and your goal is to make sure artists are paid and artists get the best kind of amplification while your users get X, Y, Z things. But you open any streaming platform in India right now and on that hero playlist, on the biggest playlist they have, for example, the on the cover, you're going to see an actor and an actress right now. What sense does that make? I'm on an audio streaming platform, not because I want to see a Bollywood star. I'm on an audio streaming platform because I want to listen to a song. Mm -hmm. If out there you're giving the biggest asset available to film again, you're defeating the purpose of what you're saying. And everything you've been saying has basically just been faff. So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, people are thinking very short term in India right now. No one's really wanting to invest into the long term which is disappointing, but I think we're trying to change that. And we sort of realized that even through our entire network now, uh, I've worked with a lot of big artists who are obviously bringing in the money into our business. Right. Now from the money that we're generating, we're investing it into our smaller artists and putting them at the forefront. You'll never see a represent logo on anything. You'll never see represent trying to take the limelight of any artist, etc. It's always going to be the artist first. Right. And we're working on the back end and we're doing that so that we're able to position those artists in a particular way, which is why even an artist who we work with even for like a year has amplified four to five X from the current position cause right. of the basic kind of stuff we were able to do at the groundwork. So yeah, that, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. And I mean, being someone who's, who's, who's on the, uh, on the streaming side, I've been on the talent side as well, been on the, on the content production side as well. I know that these are challenges that are, that are much more structural, um, than, than incidental or atomic, right? These are, um, it's a mindset that's all pervasive. 
today um having to change that is is an effort that will take i don't know maybe another few years um for us to uh, for us to convincingly put out um you know a justin bieber level talent out there who can compete with the you know biggest hollywood stars up there right and i, th- I think we we're, we're there uh, thanks to the kind of work that that you guys are doing um but i think it will take a few more years of work uh, that way right it's it's the entire it, ecosystem. everything will, yeah it'll definitely take a few more years but uh, at this point i don't think people are still seeing it in that way They're, everyone is still looking at short term fixes versus the long term vision so i think till that uh, change in thinking doesn't kick in it's not going to start moving in that direction no i i agree with you man i think um and that change starts with i mean it's a two sided change it's um putting those artists out there say say on a times square billboard right i mean you never have um a, a musician from india in new york on the times square billboard those are you know signs of that change happening slowly but i, I do agree with with what you're saying there are still smaller atomic instances where 100% um, so i mean props to spotify for doing that but again just to come back to that same position before Arman Malik was on Times Square's billboard. Right before that, Street Dancer 3D was the first ever thing on a Spotify Times Square billboard, which was again a film. So, right. and that was Varun Dhawan and whoever the person is in the film. I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that. Right. But at the same time, if that would have been all the artists who were part of the album, I would have been a lot happier about that same thing. Because again, it's a streaming service. It's about the music. Let's push out the music versus push out the actors. Sure, sure. No, I think I'm taking notes, but uh, <laughs> that's that's something that I, I would say is a lot more, a uh, lot more structural, a lot more. Hundred uh, percent. Uh, will take a lot more time to happen, right? Um, I think w- what I wanted to ask you next was um, how how do you go about like you mentioned artists being um, being artists being needing a different sort of treatment now, right? Um, it, we've always had a culture of quote unquote playback singers right that that's been india's culture and that name itself has sort of some kind of inferiority built into it right this is the playback singer wo piche kahin pe khada hai wo gana ga raha hai aur actor actor is acting actor is dancing around the trees and and romancing the the girl, the girl and and that's what's happening right from there to moving into what is a more how do you say mainstream pop star culture um it takes a, a lot of effort on the part of of the entire entourage around the artist takes a lot of strategy takes nurturing uh, tell us your experience with that and how how you're trying to do that with the artists you're working with i'd love to know um a couple of instances couple of examples uh maybe a couple of strategies that that you've had where um, you're trying to move the talents that you work with much more um audience forward M- uh, move them right in front of the audience um as opposed to the playback culture of the 90s and 2000s so i think the first thing one needs to do is get the artist to agree with that sort of vision and if they have it for themselves as well that's really important uh the first thing we do is okay you can go you can do 10 playback songs and uh you'll see a staggering growth in yourself at that time you'll start getting a lot of shows people will know you for those songs probably and you'll be recognized for those songs however no one is going to know your face at the end of the day no one is going to know how you look they might have heard your name at least a thousand times but you're not going to have any sort of visual appeal at that point so an artist needs to sort of agree to that vision there's there's no right or wrong about it. some people want to create uh songs for film because that's where they think the entire like it's it's a it's an art form right you need to think in a very cinematic way and some people are great at doing that whereas some people want to build their own niche their own uh, sort of uh, they want to be part of the subculture they want to sort of build their own audience in those spaces and the first step is identifying where a person really stands right. uh, the first thing we tell every artist is your journey now since you've chosen this path is going to be a lot slower it will be a lot more fulfilling but it's going to be a lot slower compared to other people so you might see another friend of yours who is doing the same thing but has taken another route and is going to blow up a lot faster than you but you're going to end up being the person who can end up selling more number of tickets you're going to be the person who's going to end up having way more diverse forms of revenue coming in because you're the one who someone will buy merchandise for right. you're the one uh, who will end up landing an album deal versus someone who's just going to keep on doing playback music you're going to see different kind of returns you're going to be much better hedged than a regular musician sure. so the first is as a much better financial 
uh, long term plan available if anyone tries to go ahead for this and that's what we try to explain to them initially uh, what we do then next is to figure out who do we partner with for their music now uh, luckily at this point there's so many music labels investing in the non film space that the number of options available is great you also have distributors now who are letting artists own 100% of the music but they're advancing the money to produce and create that music and to produce and create and market those videos so again the music industry ecosystem in india right now is at a very great stage for the artists where they have ample number of options to decide which route they really want to go with and they know for the fact that they won't have to shell out a lot of money from their pockets to create their music anymore which was the bigger problem till some time back once we have that in place for us marketing is really important we want to make sure that while the rest of the world is focusing all the energies on youtube we make sure our music video looks great and it is uh, positioned in a particular way but we leave it at that we're not looking at 15 million views 30 million views etc that's not what we're chasing we prefer a more organic route we want people to discover the music we want them to like the video we want them to relate to the video we care more about how many people have commented on the video we care more about how many people have actually uh, engaged with the story of the video so that's the next thing next thing that we focus on which is obviously the storytelling um, if of whether what we want to convey through a particular song is coming out properly or not right uh, the next form for marketing for us is the entire digital side so how are we growing our artists on their socials are they uh, uh, so while reels is a very trending platform right now are they doing the right kind of content on reels which is authentic to their true self and not them just taking part in a dance challenge or not them changing 30 clothes in 3 seconds uh, we wanted to be more authentic to the art form you can't see an artist becoming a content creator overnight they have to be a little different from that so we try to look at authenticity on digital and obviously whether it's growing at a steady rate or not whether they're performing live for their audiences whether they're talking about their music enough or not the bigger problem about musicians in india is they talk about everything other than music so if you go through an artist feed uh of the 10 posts they must have put up one might be about music yeah. people are not following you for your pictures if they wanted to follow someone for a good looking face they would rather go to a model and follow them they're yeah. following you for your music you need to give your audience more music talk about your music go deeper into it talk about why your artwork looked in a particular way talk about uh what your lyrics really meant who that story was for so we try to go a lot deeper into the uh ethos of the artist so that people Uh, are able to really relate with that a lot more. The next is streaming platforms, and streaming platforms are my favorite. That's where we put in a lot of our energy to make mm-hmm. sure artists are part of the right playlist, to make sure artists are part of the right brand campaigns that these streaming platforms are right. doing, to make sure uh, the streaming platform is profiling the artist in a particular way. I love playlist covers. I think that's the best kind of profiling an artist can do. That's the real holding in an artist's life. That's yeah. where you. are up like if you're on those playlist covers and you're like representing a particular kind of genre that is the best place for you to be so we put a lot of energy into making sure those happen and we work very closely with every single streaming platform to make sure that works out as well so our approach has been really a lot deeper on those lines in terms of just uh, finding the most genuine ways to bring the artist out and obviously figuring out how do we amplify those more so like i told you earlier in this conversation about chetas we figured that we want to make him a mainstream party music name okay fine for that let's get him a tv show let's get him a radio show if we could figure the rights we would have loved to do like a entire streaming one hour non stop set right uh, on streaming platforms as well so those are the kind of things we think of about this is the art form where do i take it next and how do i amplify it how do i make it reach the audience that would relate to it as well as how do i get new people to discover it and maybe want to be a part of it sure And I think that makes a lot of sense. I want to ask you two follow-ups to that. Um, very different follow-ups, actually. First is um, you talked about live music uh, and, and putting the artist out there. Last year has been terrible in in that regard, right? Um, how have artists coped? And 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 what? Where do you see this going? Is it going to be the way we're seeing it? Because um, and I've said this multiple times before on this podcast. I think. all sorts of experience can scale to digital except for music right i mean i have attended exactly one digital concert and i did not like it right it was just i'm i'm just sitting here with a with like a drink in my hand and looking at looking at my laptop nothing's happening it is in my in my favorite art, my favorite artist is performing right like surya kant is standing there with his guitar and his head is all stoned and everything i'm just sitting there and like bro 
this same thing at geo garden and i'm lost right like i'm i'm gone i'm not i'm not there i'm listening to this music <laughs> in a world of my own but here i am i'm sitting in front of my laptop and the poor guy is there smoke blowing out of his head but i'm not getting that experience so how is how do you think that's working out um that's sort of my my first follow up and my second follow up is um with with the explosion of of talent and explosion of social media um is it still possible to be long term strategic with with these talents um or or has it all become a everyday thing now a, a lot more right so i'll i'll hold for the first one um uh, for you to answer the first one first which is yeah. what about live music how do we how do we negotiate this space is digital live music the way forward or or are you seeing another thing in that first of all since you brought up covid um i think covid was a blessing in disguise for most artists uh my artists have released and made more music in this entire period than they mm-hmm. have for the entire mass of their career and that is absolutely brilliant for a manager to now be sitting on so much music which you can do so much stuff with sure. uh and that has been brilliant we also we released about 80 songs uh till december 2020 from march uh, 2020 to december 2020 which is probably second to the biggest label in the country Maybe and give us a give us a comparison right in in a year in the year before covid how many songs did you do 20 that's insane man so insane. there's been at least a four x and i'll tell you why we did this so as soon as lockdown lockdown kicked in i sort of figured that this puts an end to film music for the next 6 odd months at least sure. what does that mean is all those priority slots on all of these streaming platform playlists are now empty you right. no longer have to hold a song for tc this is big film coming up you no longer have to hold a song for dharmas a slot for dharmas next film now i can get those number 1 2 3 slots which i would never get otherwise because the major labels had sure. occupied those so we figured that this is the best time that if a person wants to discover new music the only place they're going to get it from is the independent market so right from that point i i think we got all our artists really excited about this as well and we explained it to them and they went hard at it they put out so much music and they've seen their socials grow by at l- on an average every month has grown about 15 to 20% month on month right which was brilliant their monthly listeners have grown over 100% in this entire time because wow. they got playlisted so heavily because everything else was empty at that time and they were getting the best slots they right. were getting we were getting everything we wanted it was like a dream period for us it's getting back to reality now but that entire period was absolutely brilliant it was golden for us uh we started making money out of music royalties and artists understood that okay fine this is something which is more long term this is something which is more sustainable so i'm going to start focusing a lot more on putting out my music now as well so that thought process changed first when it came to the live scene we tried digital shows it didn't have the same kind of vibe at all we were able to put together the first ever online music festival with instagram called live in your living room we did it uh, in the first week of the lockdown we had a massive lineup of artists and everything it didn't have the same vibe I've worked lucky Ali to perform for the UN tonight. Uh, he's doing a free show on Insider this evening. Uh, right. It's looking beautiful. It's looking brilliant. But again, if I could have seen the same thing in person, I would be in tears. I would be with. I still have goosebumps. But that feeling live would have just been something else. Yeah. So that's not going to change. But then again, things started opening up again in December, January, February, and uh, all of these artists who had put out a lot of music, like one of the artists I manage is called Anoop Jain. uh he i think saw the maximum growth in the out of all musicians in the country right now he is currently the highest engaged musician on instagram in the country uh we started working with him last year he was at about 15000 followers he is now sitting at 110000 followers his monthly listeners grew at least 4x one of his songs crossed 10 million streams all of that stuff happened and that was great and we wanted to sort of pilot a project with him where we wanted to take him to tour in small about 500 capacity venues right because that's the maximum we can do right now and see how that goes so we did a 3 day tour right around valentines day we did it in delhi uh, bangalore and calcutta all shows were sold out one week before they were supposed to happen this is the first time this guy is stepping on stage and he sold out 1500 tickets in his first week in his for, for his first ever tour so we understood that this is a great time to start building original artists ips now So now with our entire roster, we're sort of reimagining the way we would do live shows. Earlier, someone would book us, we would go there and perform. Now we're like, no, we want to do it differently. We're building shows from scratch, which is more of a storytelling sort of format, 
which is all about the artists it's all about the journey it's all about the music they're no longer going and covering like the most popular bollywood song they're now going and performing their own catalog because they were able to build such a strong catalog and just the way the fans are interacting with it is a lot more so i can now very confidently do like our own sort of festival if the time permits with just our roster and be able to sell out a good 5 to 10000 tickets very easily uh, and those are the kind of experiences we're looking at building on the live side as well live music will never be able to be replaced by digital and people can say that over and over again but i don't think it can happen because just seeing those people going for a new show for the first time crying getting in posters all of that isn't going to happen and that feeling can't you can't uh, replicate that anywhere else yeah absolutely so i 1000% agree with you that live isn't going but the way people do live is going to change a lot more people are going to look for more intimate experiences as well uh, people are going to not want to just come and hear anyone singing any song now they want to go and hear that song that was with them for the 6 months of the lockdown that they kept on listening to on loop everyone had that one playlist which they kept going back to and those few songs that they kept rotating now they want to hear those songs live and i think everyone who's able to build that affinity with a particular artist or with a particular genre of music uh, is going to do that and we're seeing that happening with various smaller shows happening around the country right now no for sure i think the other thing is that there's a lot more awareness about the kind of experiences that a live show can give you right more produced experience a more storytelling experience um that can be created you know no it's it's no more small coves where people are just um, standing playing music going away or or you're like 100000 feet away from the stage you're only seeing the artist to be this small um yeah. and you're actually just seeing him on a big stage it's it's it is all about st- those storytelling intimate well produced experiences and i'm glad that um and and i've and i've heard this from from several people who are working in the industry that this is definitely the future a more produced more intimate more storytelling yeah. experience that comes and to i mean that's the best part of a single song writer right so for a new show for example before he sang every song he told them that okay this is why i wrote this particular song this is what i was feeling and this is why i did it and this is the reason i've done it now they're all feeling that same mood right before they're hearing that song right. and right. the response is absolutely mental I posted this one video on Instagram of a new performing in Delhi. Whenever you get time, do check it out. You will see people screaming at the top of their voices, singing his song louder than he could. And at the end of it, he's just standing there. Oh, I, I saw that one words. on your Instagram. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're completing Crazy. the whole song, and he doesn't know what to do. He's just standing there. He's like, "This is my first ever live show, and I don't know what to do anymore." Yeah. So we want to build those kind of moments for those. That's like really what excites us a lot right now. I've really? done the entire thing that I want my artist to perform. on a particular lineup because it's a very big festival i now want to make sure that we're able to curate a much better experience for the artists instead mm-hmm. as well as for the fans and listeners so that they really really enjoy what is going to happen next like they really enjoy the vibe the artists are trying to bring that's fantastic man um to my second follow up then um the the industry is become all the more complex right with with all of this happening um today or today a musician that you're working with is not just a musician they're also a social media star they're also um maybe harboring ambitions of being on screen they also want to be in music video is it is it possible to plan long term in that regard or is it still okay let's take maybe 3 months at a time or 6 months at a time how do how do you approach that given the opportunities are lying everywhere right i mean um i'll give you an example uh, a few months ago we did a We, we randomly did a music video with with Justine and um, and Bear Biceps because my client at that point in time, Dairy Milk Silk, was like, "Oh, we really want to do a music video, right?" And that just that just happened, right? I mean, Justine didn't think of um, it being sort of a uh, a cinematic thing. It wasn't thought of as, "Oh, I'm going. To, uh, this is part of an album." It was just a brand led release that just happened to become a hit, right? Now that. gives a very different impetus than a more traditional artist right so long story short or long question short how do you plan long term with these guys given that there are so many attractions so many distractions so much happening all all the time so i mean first of all uh, it sucks but m- not many artists in the country have a plan for themselves not many management agencies have actually sat down on a whiteboard with the artists and discussed that this is what we want to achieve in this particular year these are our goals these are our targets this is what we want to get to mm-hmm. that entire thing has still not happened that entire planning culture has still not come into the field mm-hmm. so that's why whenever something comes people are more than happy to go with the flow and take it up mm-hmm. um the way we do it is we take one year at a time 
uh, one year is a good enough time for you to control whatever can come, can't come, whatever will happen, won't happen. You're able to predict to some degree of certainty that these are the things we want to do. And that's how we really go about it, that these are the kind of goals we want to hit. This is what we want to do. Our goals are not, uh, our goals are more on the lines of, okay, we want to make sure we put out at least 10 songs this year. We want to make sure that the five brands that we wanted to work with, we're able to tap at least three of them for sure and make sure that we're able to convert them into something or the other. Uh, our social growth at this point has to reach this kind of level. Now, obviously, there'll be times when, say, for example, an artist is discovered by another really big artist and they want to work with them, they want to collaborate with them. That'll obviously change the dynamics altogether. That'll change the way things are happening. And you need to go back and rework that plan again. Uh, I think someone, since I run other businesses as well, and people keep telling me this, uh, we don't follow a business. No one, no single business in the world right now can have a one-year business plan or a five-year business plan or a three-year business plan. It's now moved into quarters. You plan your quarter, you work around with your quarter, you see what is happening because there's everything is so dynamic and you replan and you rework everything after that, keeping in mind what is happening and you go ahead. So that's sort of what we started doing now as well. Now, uh, we obviously do our daily, weekly calls, but we're also sitting at the end of three months and deciding like, okay, this is what has happened in the past three months. This is what it looks like is going to happen. How do we move about it now? You need to be more flexible. You need to be uh, ready to be that volatile to be able to really move with things. Uh, but the first and like most important advice to any artists or managers is please start planning what your year is going to look like. What are your major goals? Start focusing on that and keep tracking that every quarter and changing things every quarter basis of that. That's okay. really important because that will help you uh, sort of know exactly whether whatever you did the entire year was worth it or not. Yeah, and, and helps you stay the course, helps you deal with sort of uncertainty because this business does have a lot of uncertainty. A lot of it. Right. Um, let me ask you this. Um, how do you how do you scout for young talent or or what do you look at um, in a talent before signing them up for a present? And also I, I love those t-shirts that you guys that you guys have made. I talked to my agent. Beautiful. Uh, but uh, yeah, back to my question. Uh, how do you what, what do you look for in a talent when you're signing them up? People keep asking me this and honestly, there's no right answer. Uh, it's basically, it can be like a single video that you see, which you really like of a person and you feel like, okay, there's something in them that I can add more value to. And because of whatever value I add, the person will be able to grow. So the first thing we look at is growth for the artist. If I see someone and I know that I can do certain amount of things in a very scientific way, which will end up uh, getting them a lot more growth, which will end up getting them in front of a lot more people. That's the first step that we look at that. Will I be able to deliver that kind of value to them? I've had like very big singles reach out to me earlier for management and saying that, you know, we want to work with you. We like the work you're doing. But when I look at them, there's like, I'm not the right fit for them, though they are incredible. They are like, the most talented people in the country, but I don't know what to do next with them. Like I don't know how to make it bigger for them. Whereas there might be a kid who I just see for the first time and I'm like, okay, I understand the value this kid has and I know where I can add further value to it. So it needs to be a very symbiotic relationship where you, if you're not adding value to someone, you don't end up working with them. Most people think that we're rejecting someone because uh, we don't feel they're talented enough or we don't feel like there's uh enough there's an x factor about them or whatever yeah, people want to call it yeah. that's that's not the that's not the truth we're not looking for a spark we're looking for the spark we can add to the sure. person rather yeah. than uh the other way around so like for example there's a guy called yashraj mukhate right now who's absolutely blowing up absolutely. uh doing his own thing but i can't i don't know how to i would never be able to manage him because i don't understand what he's doing as well i don't think i can add value to him Whereas a new music producer sitting out of the bedroom, making a particular genre of music, I might understand that a little better because I feel like, okay, this is something I can work with. This is something I can blow up. So it's not that the first is a bad musician or doing anything wrong because that, that person is blowing up more than anyone else. But at right. the same time, it's not something which I can connect with or I can grow with the kind of resources I have available. To. I, I so, love the honesty with which, you, with which you've come at that, man. I mean, yeah, I'm, you're great. I, I'm good at what I do, but maybe this is not a partnership that will work because I don't know how to help you. Right. I, and I, I love that. Love the honesty with which you you've come at that. Um, yeah. Cause an artist has just one career, right? And if I tell you that I'm going to manage you and I'm not able to add any value to you, I have ruined your career for you. And I don't want to do that to anyone. I don't, uh, I don't see that happening. Also, 
uh, I think when you reach a certain scale in business, you don't care about the incremental money that is going to come out if you manage a particular person. And mm-hmm. I think uh, I've never thought that way about, like we've never u- seen an artist as a uh, money-making unit. We've rather seen it as a long-term partnership. So right. even when those things come, you need to like sort of zoom out from that for a second and just look at whether you can really grow it any further or not. Right, right. I, I love it, man. I love the way you've come at this. Um, coming about to pretty much the last part of this, um, let me ask you something that's been on my mind um, for a while. Is there the concept of work-life balance in, in an agent's life, in a, in a music manager and agent's life, in your life? <laughs> This is the worst day to ask me this. I had a <laughs> terrible night last night just dealing with uh, very different things. Uh, honestly, I don't think it's there and I, it sucks that it's not there. But right. like, just to give you an example, on one day, one of my artists might have won like the best award of their lives. But at the same time, another artist is going through a really terrible time in their lives. Mm-hmm. And as their manager, I'm invested equally in all of their lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, they look at me as more than just their manager. But, we're partners, we're friends, uh, we're, like we're, we're the best friends for each other. Um, we act as therapists for each other. We keep on speaking to each other about every single thing in our lives because you need to have that kind of a bond with your manager for it to really work out. So right. uh, while I want to celebrate the brilliant stuff going on for one artist, I'm not able to give my 100% of love and affection at that point because I'm feeling bad about the bad day another one is going through. Mm-hmm. And that keeps on happening. And at the same time, there's no... Uh, there's no work clock. So if an artist is feeling low about something at three in the night, they're going to pick up the phone on you and want to speak to you. Uh, if an artist has an idea they want to discuss and they just thought of it at that time and they create a people, uh, they aren't, you can't expect them to be professional and wait for 9 a.m. the next morning to call you and discuss it with you. Uh, they want to discuss it at that time because they're feeling their energy at that time and they want to talk about it. So mm-hmm. they're going to call you whenever required and you need to be available to talk about that. Uh, that's really, really, really taxing for a manager and uh, I think that's the most difficult part about being a manager as well is at every single moment of your life you need to understand that your number two number one is always the person you're working for you're and uh, I think managers always forget that they're working for someone they yeah. start feeling that the artist is working for them at some point but that's never the case you're always number two in the person's life you always need to put someone ahead of you and I think just that mental sacrifice of always putting someone ahead of you can be really taxing. But at the same time, these are great individuals. And that's why being able to vibe with these people is very important. Because now when someone's calling me and speaking to me at night, it's my friend speaking to me at the end of the day. I'm not looking at it as an artist has called me and spoken to me. It's my friend. And I would stay up for my friend at any given point in the time. So it doesn't hurt me at the end of the day. It doesn't make me feel bad about it for even a second. So till that sort of bond isn't built between an artist and a manager, you're not going to be able to sustain it for a long time. And touch wood, I'm really happy that I have that bond with my artist where we can speak to each other about anything. Uh, we can pick up the phone on anything. And I do it with them the same way they do it with me as well. If I'm having a shit day, I will pick up the phone and talk to them about it. If I have an idea, which I think is great, which I figured out when I'm drunk at night at a club, I'm going to call them from there and talk to them, slur through the entire thing, and they'll still be okay with that and be like, okay, fine, we get what he's saying. We really like it. And this happens more often than you would imagine. But uh, it's just like having that sort of bond and relationship, which will be able to guide you through it. And uh, work does become your life, which some people say sucks. But I really enjoy it because these guys are now my friends and I'm working. Just imagine you're working in an office with your best friends. And the whole day is about that. So I think that's a great feeling and I really, really enjoy that. I love it, man. I think it all um, goes into the do what moves you sort of uh, do what you love, do what moves you situation where work doesn't... That's a Pakadi plug. And I had someone from Pakadi <laughs> talking about Weekender here a couple of episodes ago. If you haven't heard that episode, listeners, please go check it out. Um, just about at the end of this, I want to play like a small game with you. Um, it's called the most unusual. I'm going to ask you three most unusual things that have happened to you. First of all, most unusual booking request you've got. I've had like uh like a very big goon, like a very, very big, well-known goon in India mm-hmm. want to book one of my artists for a five people dinner mm-hmm. while there were five people sitting and eating dinner. And there were 30 people around us with like massive guns standing there. Uh, 
and watching and every time we would be like we want to end now uh, one guy with a gun would walk up to us and be like sir ko bhi aur sunna and uh, wow that must be scary man it was it was it was it was an experience i wouldn't call it scary it <laughs> yeah. was an experience i've realized that goons are the sweetest people uh down there <laughs> there are. and uh, it sucks that i've interacted with so many to have an inference about this in but yeah i think i believe they're thing. really misunderstood you know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah all right um second question right um most unusual brand request you've had mm, i'm sorry there, <laughs> there, there have been i they they i don't think there's been any unusual one as such they've been pretty much fine like i i love branded work i love working with brands and even if the unusual we try to figure out how to make it work or we very politely just decline it but there hasn't been anything really unusual as such to be so, honest so very i wish there were more brands working with musicians so that there could be unusual stuff like i wish it was at that level and i hope that happens soon uh last one a most unusual talent situation you've been in you don't have to name names of course I've been in very unusual talent situations with people, but like for example, uh, there's DJ Chetas playing at this club in Bandra. Uh, he's performing there, and there's this again. It all comes back to the goon. There's a very big goon who happens to have been some underworld person's uh, uh, gun supplier at some point, and mm-hmm. this guy has a reputation of going up to the DJ console and slapping the DJ and leaving. and he's done this to five other DJs five very well known DJs in the past and that's his thing like he comes to the DJ concert slaps the DJ and leaves and no one can do anything because he's a goon and right. it's weird but uh, and this club had like a small entry to the DJ console and I was standing at that entry because uh, we're always on the side what like just making mm-hmm. sure things are okay and this guy is trying to go up he's uh, drunk out of his wits and um, he's trying to go up go up go up and I'm standing I'm like what happened what do you want to go for he's like nahi mujhe upar jana hai the bouncer is also looking at me because the bouncer knows who he is i don't know who this guy is and uh, this guy said to me i know cheta so then i asked cheta do you know him cheta like kon hai bhagao like i don't know him so then i'm like nahi nahi sir you can't go and i'm being extremely polite on that day for some reason which i i am never like that i'm normally more uh, crass and i'm like no you can't just go there and for that day for some reason and thank god like that i was being extremely polite and i said it's not possible then this guy pushes me uh and because he's so drunk while he's pushing me the poor guy falls back instead so he falls on his other people while he's pushing me because of the pressure or whatever okay. and uh, then they, they this entire crew is like oh my god did you just push the, this particular person like did you just push this guy and i was like no that didn't happen and then this guy uh, because he's been so embarrassed with the entire situation just leaves at that point and then the club owner comes in he's like do you know what you all have just done and blah 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 and we exit from a back gate i've been asked to put my phone off for 3 days and it's gone to like that level and then uh finally everything gets calm and settled and everything but uh most unusual thing of like situation i've been with uh with an artist and chetas has no idea that any of this has anything like this has even happened he is still playing on the night still continues but this entire a uh, weird scenario has completed while this has gone on insane man insane that sounds that sounds insane i mean i think anybody else at that point would just piss their pants and go home right <laughs> like bro nahi hoga that sounds insane man yeah. and i don't know my stars were well aligned that day that normally when someone would push me i would react to that out here yeah. i'm holding the guy's hand and i'm like please don't fall and whatever and i'm guessing that guy uh took that as a sign of respect and left but whatever it was it was really it was really weird and as i'm i'm glad that sorted itself out um ashma just brilliant talking to you man um brings me to my last question it's something that i ask almost everyone who's on this show um one piece of entertainment that you would recommend uh for my listeners something that that you hold dear something that um has been with you for a long time or maybe just something you picked up and learned a lot from could be a book a meme a song a game whatever um but a piece of entertainment for my listeners to check out from you um defiant ones on netflix right uh best story ever about dr dre and jimmy iveen and how they built the entire thing really inspiring always my go to thing um if you want to learn a bit more about artist management and agenting uh entourage is the best way to go about doing it uh-huh. uh just the energy ari gold puts out will make you learn about how to deal with 
the Cuthroat music industry or any industry you're a part of, for example. Uh, and the third is one of my uh, favorite podcasts, which because I love marketing, I really love listening to it, is Advertising is Dead, which is also by the IBM network. Uh, by Varun Dugirala and uh, I think I absolutely love that podcast as well. There's so much to learn from the uh, conversations that happen and it just keeps you up to date about everything happening in an entire industry. So these three are my go-to uh, daily motivation seekers. Brilliant. So that's The Defined Ones. Uh, I think The Defined Ones is on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, on Entourage is on HBO and uh, Varun Dugirala, uh, my friend, um, with Advertising is Dead on IBM. Um, Ashman, like I said, wonderful talking to you. Um, and, and congratulations, man, on, on some phenomenal work um, that you and Represent are doing and have been doing for the past few years. And, um, and all the best for, uh, for whatever comes next in this dynamic world of music that we live in. I hope you had fun. I loved it. I, I don't know. If, I hope people enjoy the conversation, but I really, really enjoyed speaking to you. It Thanks gives so me much. confidence to like do more podcasts now. I'll For sure. Please do more yeah. podcasts. Uh, we're going from just music to audio. Do more podcasts. Absolutely. <laughs> um, that's it. Um, to my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. This is Vineet Kanabar saying goodbye.